All right, uh, welcome to uh, Grasshopper week three. And uh, this is the third video uh, of the week. And uh, in this video, we're going to look at um, automating unfolding uh, or unrolling surfaces. Now, as you all know, uh, native to Rhino, and actually this, uh, I'll probably make a surface to close it off. Any surface or poly surface uh, that can be unrolled, which means they're relatively flat, I'm joining this, so this is a poly surface, can be unrolled um, using the unroll surface command in Rhino. Um, if you pick the don't explode option, then it basically does that, right? Okay, and that allows you to kind of fold it back up and construct it back into something like this. And so uh, the main thing that we're going to look at is actually automating some of that and actually being able to uh, create tabs from it. Obviously with this, uh, you could use the, uh, the uh, paneling tool sort of tab command uh, to generate those tabs right, uh, as part of a more manual process. Um, but um, we would like to do that uh, consistently in Grasshopper. Okay. So uh, the first thing that we're going to do is actually look at our website, and uh, this is this uh, definition is called the um, Tetra Unfold with tabs. Okay, so the Tetra Unfold uh, is going to use this thing: unroll brep dot gh user. This is a Grasshopper user object, and you want to basically copy it to the Grasshopper user objects folder. So you can download it, save it somewhere, but uh, you basically want to copy it to here. So if you go to Grasshopper, go to File, Special Folders, User Object Folder, and here is, and that'll bring up Windows Explorer, and here is where all of your user objects are, and that's where you plop them. Uh, user objects generally are sort of smaller definitions or smaller uh, scripted cl clusters uh, that haven't gone to a point where they become generally where they become their own sort of tab, right? Um, and so it's just a way to kind of insert simple things. And so I just copied it and put it here on roll brep, this guy. Okay, just save it somewhere or save and then copy it in, drag it in. Uh, make sure it's there, and you don't even have to restart uh, Grasshopper for this to show up. Uh, if you go to your extra tab, it should pop in right away after you put it in that folder. All right, so let's just uh, plop this in. So unroll brep, and I mentioned that um, if this actually doesn't work for you, uh, you might actually have to install GH Python. Uh, from the Food for Rhino site beforehand, uh, before this will actually work correctly. So, you know, try it out. Uh, if it doesn't work, if both of these don't work, uh, then this might be the reason, right? Because this basically uses a Python script, and you can see its uh, icon as well. Okay. So, for example, um, if I take a brep and I link this in, for example, right? Uh, right click, set one brep. And uh, let's just plug that in, okay? So you see this is more or less the same result, right? Uh, so the nice thing is that like, I don't actually need to have dead geometry to be able to unroll. I can use grasshopper generated geometry, right? Uh, and the sort of really easy way, and this is a Boolean toggle. Double click, type Boolean, Boolean toggle true false right double click it becomes true double click it becomes false so false is uh, explode if you make it true then it actually explodes all the individual surfaces right which we don't want okay this uh, is for um, any sort of geometry that you want to unroll with it um, and it can come in handy for example if you had you know some circles or a pattern on here that you wanted to unroll, but like wanted it to kind of stay on the same one. Um, if you didn't put it here, then it'll do it as well. And uh, 
Actually, maybe we can try that really quick. Uh, Turp curve on surface. So I'm just going to draw something like that. Put it in as a curve. So it's on the surface. Put that in. And you'll see it gets uh, it gets unrolled with it essentially, right? So that's actually kind of useful or helpful for uh, if you have some sort of custom surface pattern that you want to play around with, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, that's helpful, right? Just so you know what that is. Okay. So uh, if we kind of move along and let's say we don't necessarily want to use this, let's try something else. Uh, one of the obvious places to look at uh, for all of you is the uh, Lunchbox plugin, right? Now the Lunchbox plugin by default has a lot of these mathematical surfaces which are really cool to you know screw around with. Um, I think the, the one I use in the uh, example file is actually this, the dodecahedron. But obviously, and the, the sort of uh, example is pretty clear as well. The dodecahedron looks like that. You can change its orientation plane and its radius so to make it bigger. And um, this is a closed B rep, right? So you can just push it in and it does this. So we'll use this as, as our uh, starting example as first, but then we'll swap it out later. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's keep on going. Uh, let me get this, hide this, hide that, get it out of the way. So kind of see what's happening a little better. All right. So uh, look, if we look at our outputs uh, that are coming from this thing. Uh, this is execution information, and this basically is usually linked to a panel, and it tells you, you know, did anything go wrong, blah blah, etc. Et okay, and as well as description, right? Unroll BREP as zero to eleven, twelve separate surfaces. One, two, three, four, yeah, okay, twelve separate surfaces, and that's important. Right, because they're different surfaces. The undraw ge geometry will be the curve that we had earlier if we had anything here. So there's nothing here right now. So 12 separate surfaces. Um, in that case, uh, let's see. Because what we want to do, for example, if we want to make tabs for this, right, is we want to take these outer boundaries and offset them a certain distance. If we offset them a certain distance, then we can sort of relink or reconnect them to draw tabs, right? To make tabs. Okay. So offset, uh, offset curve, specified distance, right? That seems right. And so let's pull that in, offset. Now you'll note that there's a lot of different offsets, right? So you have to kind of go through and look at them, pay attention, right? Um, since this is in the curve category, you know, that's where it is. Inputs, curve to offset. Offset distance is one. Plane is XY plane, which is the horizontal. And a corner type. Okay. So let's see. Um, if we take the unrolled B rep and just do that right away. So this is a problem, right? Because as you can see, uh, there are two problems. One. Sometimes the curves gets offset outwards, sometimes inwards, right? And then we actually don't want these, right? You don't want the inner edges, right? You just want the outside ones, the ones that are naked uh, is the term for this. Uh, that's not sharing a side with another fold, basically. Okay? So that's a problem. Uh, we need to find a way uh, to be able to evaluate this uh, on its own. So what we will need to do um, is actually, as the BREP, uh, join it first. So BREP join. Join this. So this, uh, if you look at the output in the list, it's just one BREP. Okay? Uh, let's see what happens. So now this is actually 
offsetting inwards correctly, right? Um, there is another way of uh, kind of doing this, uh, and especially this is the sort of qu quick and dirty way uh, that we will use um, to get the offset curves. However, um, if you go to um, the surface tab uh, under analysis, there is actually this B rep edges, right? Extract the edge curves of a B rep. Okay, so let's look at that. It asks for a B rep and it uh, tells us actually naked edge curves versus interior edge curves. So, let's see. And uh, because we can't really see what's happening, uh, let's pull in a curve component. Copy it and do this. So, when I click on this, it will, and let me hide some of the stuff. When I click on this, it actually highlights, okay, so the naked edge curves are the everything that's on the outside, right? And then the inside edge curves are these, everything that's on the inside, okay? Now the offset right now is going in the wrong direction, right? And so what we can do is basically flip uh, everything. So you can either do this, uh, flip a curve, uh, take the sort of joined curves, right? And so the offset goes right, out that way. Or uh, if you don't, like if we had it as before, you basically put in a negative value for um, the offset. Right? But it just kind of depends. Sometimes if you don't want to do a negative value, this is actually better uh, just to kind of keep things consistent and positive. Okay? So you flip this. Uh, right here uh, in the offset distance, so let's say you know, 0 to uh, 2.00 and put that into the offset distance. So this is basically the tab uh, depth, I guess, or tab offset is what you can call it. So you can basically offset it more or less, right? So let's go with one for now. Uh, plane is the x, y. This one actually is kind of important because once we've done the offset, we don't want these continuous lines. Um, when it's offsetting outwards, it will actually add little corners to fill in the gaps. So if you change this to like round, it actually rounds it like this. Uh, or fillets it smooth or uh, right click here and say, let's say chamfer right does that right well what we really want is just none so it offsets it with the same length and doesn't try to kind of connect uh, the edges okay and the nice thing about this is that uh, even though it does that when they intersect it cuts them short so it doesn't extend and go beyond right so that's really sort of nifty Okay, so there's that. Uh, now the real function of the join um, is actually to be able to unify the direction of the curves, right? And so when you do that, uh, it forces all the curves on the edges to offset in the right, same direction, either outwards or inwards, right? Instead of like what we had earlier, where some of them were going outwards, some were going inwards, it's a mess, and it's just really hard to work with, okay? So that's why the join uh, here is uh, so important. Now, um, the next thing uh, we want to do is actually start grabbing um, the endpoints of these curves, right? And then basically connecting them to the endpoints here, right? Um, but actually before that, we also want to be able to kind of make them a little shorter, right? You might, might want to kind of bevel these a little bit. So the next thing we want to do is to scale it. Scale, right? 
So these are all offset curves, and uh, scaling requires a geometry, a center for the scaling, right? And the scale factor, which is normal. Scale factor zero is smaller than, let's say, 1.0. Oh, okay. So slider for the scale factor, right? Uh, the center of scaling, let's say if we take these and pull them in, you'll see it's doing something really strange, mm -hmm. right? Because it's, you're only giving it one center of scaling right here. Uh, what's actually happening is that it's just using you know, zero, zero, zero point as the center of scaling uh, for each and every one of these because there's actually you know, a total of zero, a total of 19 curves here, right? So essentially what you want to do is actually grab the center points of each of these line segments, right? The midpoint of each of these line segments and use those as its sort of scaling points individually, right? Okay, so uh, to do that, we will actually have to go to curve, analysis and point on curve evaluates a curve at a specific location so this is the midpoint right so we find the midpoint on all of these curves right uh, now you have to pay attention to some of these because these for example that's an individual line segment right but this one is actually two line segments that and that's the midpoint and this is one two three four line segments they've been joined together right uh, and so it's sort of messed up um, so what we really want to be able to do before uh, we do that is actually we need to explode it explode the curve into smaller segments okay so let's do that here and this there. OK. So let me hide this. Just so, so now you see every single line segment has its own midpoint now, right? which is perfect. That's what we want. OK. And this, if you push that in there, and the scale does that. Right, which is surprising, but not because at first here you have what you're pulling in 19 curves, and here you have a whole set of all these sort of different line segments based off like what whether it was originally an individual curve or what if it was a compound curve, and it's like it's confusing. And Grasshopper is trying to basically match, you know multiples each time right so uh, so here uh, because of our crazy uh, data structure that's coming out of this right so some of them were single some of them there were multiple curves that were joined together what you want to do is actually just in the outputs flatten this so it becomes one long list of curves right there's no confusion and at the same time, uh, what we also want to do is actually instead of this original output, right, which is 19 curves, but some of them are multi-segmented, some are single-segmented, it's a sort of hodgepodge mix, right? Some are line-like, some are polylines, right? So we want to actually put these in instead. Everything's a line, a single line, and put that into the scaling. Okay. So if you hide the offset, then you'll see actually now that everything is working as expected. Okay, and we can make this slightly smaller. Okay, we're done with the scaling. Uh, now we need to connect our ends. So simply, uh, if you go to curve analysis, endpoints right here, extract the endpoints of a curve. Okay. So we want the endpoints of this, which is before they were offset, and then after they were offset. Okay. So the one that we offset here and we scaled, right? So this geometry here. Let's uh, copy paste that again. 
and the second output comes from comes from here, right? These guys uh, before the offset. However, because these curves at the same time, uh, if you pull these in, uh, are very similar because this is just like one really long uh, compound curve, right? So we'll have to actually do the same thing and basically uh, explode it. So let's explode this curve as well. And you can see its vertices of all the exposed segments. You can look at that as well. So we have some that are start points and some that are end points. Uh, that makes it easier for us to kind of pair them together. And uh, let's just see really quickly. Uh, line with two points. And uh, let's put the start to the start. Okay, so you'll see actually some of these start getting drawn in, right? We need another another one, copy paste, and the ends to the ends, right? And there you have it. Okay, uh, let's actually kind of uh, tidy things up a little bit because this is getting messy. So the next thing uh, we really want to do here as I start kind of hiding some of these points just to kind of get them out of the way. Um, is actually to kind of start to collect uh, some of the curves together uh, based off of the properties. Now if this was uh, going to be a laser cut file for example then these outside curves are the ones that you would kind of assign as uh, sort of through cuts. The insides are either scores or dashed lines. right? And so what I usually do with something like this is I go to params and just grab a curve container and it. So one of these is actually going to collect all the outside curves. The outside curves are kind of uh, complicated to find, right, because you know, parts of it is here, which are these sort of smaller, shorter segments. One is this, this is the other side, and then there's also these, right, which are the long ones. This is all sort of inner, right, this is all the inner stuff. Okay, so for the outside curves, you will have to do that. Hold down your shift key as you're dragging it in. And I think these guys, right? Look at the highlight. So from here, shift key, drag it in. Right? Now if you hide these then, control Q, and this still looks right, then you're good to go. Okay? Now let's find the inside curves, which are essentially uh, these guys and the boundary, right? So both of these, or essentially it's the original, right? So you can grab both of these, pull these in there, hold down the shift key, pull them in there, right? And these are basically, if you hide these, these are the inside curves. All right. So the outside cut curves, and uh, let's just give it the names. That's fine, but the inside ones uh, we actually want to dash them, right? So, double click, dash pattern, right? So this dash pattern, I can put a curve in, and this is what a pattern of dash and gap lengths, right? So, let's say. We'll have to kind of try this out. Uh, one, two, point two, and actually we'll have to make this into 
multi-line data like that. So 1 and 0 0.2 into there. So if I hide the original sort of container that we used to collect uh, inside curves, inside fold, right? Then you'll see these are actually dashes now. And by kind of adjusting these two numbers, um, let's do 0 0.5 you can adjust the dash gap sort of lengths, right? And same thing, um, just, to control v, just to kind of make it sort of clear. Inner dash curves. And that's more or less it. Uh, you can name this as well. Uh, dash interval. Right? And you can do it like this. You can do sliders. It actually really doesn't matter. Okay? And um, I'm going to kind of go through and annotate this a little bit. But that's the sort of broad idea. All right, that's more or less it. Um, the version I have in this video is slightly marginally different than the version I show um, in this, uh, but it's just a matter of kind of sequencing when where I join curves first or I explode them first, that sort of thing. Um, but fundamentally, they work off of the same uh, basic idea. So I'll probably just save this file as a slightly different uh, separate file name or just call it version 2. And you can look at both. Um, it's more or less the same thing. Okay. Now, for one of your assignments, uh, what we are asking you to do is to take something like this and especially basically go to uh, Lunchbox and try out some of the stuff that uh, Lunchbox offers. And like I said, um, for example, um, I'm going to try to use the, uh, let's see, torus surface, right, which looks like that. I'm going to take out this, and you can test how well it works, right, but we need flat panels for this to unroll correctly. So if you go to uh, the panels, uh, section in the lunch box, then you can try out some of these, right? Um, generally, only the triangle panels will actually be able to handle W curved surfaces, right? You can try, let's say that, give it a surface. Uh, if you hide, obviously you can play with these parameters, uh, especially in terms of the diameter, the size, that sort of thing, scale, how big it is, um, that sort of stuff. Um, but then if you use the panels, and you can also control subdivisions of the panels, so 0 to 16. In the U and the V, like this, you can kind of control how detailed this really gets. Right? 10 is probably good. Push that in. Give it a second. and. You'll see that initially it kind of does this, right? 
uh, where everything gets sort of laid on top of each other. And that's because these panels, as they're coming out, they're also individual surfaces, right? They're individual on-trim surfaces. So the same thing, just join it, right? So if you join this, D rep join, do that, then do that, then this is actually what you'll get, right? With everything dashed. Uh, okay, there's some funky stuff happening there. Okay, so that actually might kind of depend on what sort of pattern you're using. Um, I guess, for example, the tri B, it doesn't like very much. Um, so, you know, there's a little bit of, there's probably a little bit of trial and error. Um, I can see why the tri B would fail because it has too many of the corners all going into one and the offset component just doesn't know what to do. Um, but, yeah. Just uh, sort of give it a shot. And uh, you don't actually have to stick to these surfaces. You can draw your own. You can make your own poly surface like this, whatever. Um, just sort of try it out and test it out. Uh, try to break it even because uh, that's the way you kind of learn what the limits are, uh, what's a good idea to do, what's a bad idea to do. Okay?